DJ Productions. What's up YouTube? It's Game Master 7 here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my top 10 Kanto Pokemon from Generation 1. Keep in mind that this top 10 list is purely based off my opinion, so if you don't agree with it, then by all means, leave your own top 10 Kanto Pokemon in the comment section below. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. Just making the bottom of my list at number 10 is Growlithe, the fire puppy from Generation 1. The main reason I chose Growlithe is because he's a puppy who I find to be cute. Just as someone would see a baby and go, aww, because they think it's cute, I like Growlithe because it looks like a cute puppy. In fact, Growlithe is one of the few Pokemon that I wouldn't mind having as a pet in real life. After all, who doesn't find it cute to have a puppy as a pet? That's really the main reason I chose Growlithe as far as design goes. Otherwise, he has a rather decent moveset. Uh, he can actually learn Dig, which is a very helpful move, at least in Generation 1. It gives him some good type coverage, and as you can see here, he can use Dig to stand up to Arcanine, which is his evolved form. It's probably one instance where evolving doesn't always guarantee a win. Granted, I'm playing against a computer here, so naturally they're not going to be as good as, say, a human player. Uh, however, with the right strategy and the benefit of being slower when using Dig, uh, Growlithe can beat his evolved form in spite of that. And for these reasons, Growlithe is number 10 on my list. Oh! Is it down and out? In the number 9 slot, we have Mew, the legendary Pokemon that you could only obtain in Generation 1, either through the use of the Mew glitch or through cheat devices. The main reason I chose Mew for my list is due to the fact that it can learn every single TM and HM in the game. That being said, it makes him very diverse and gives him any Mew you run into the potential to be unique. Uh, that's really the only reason Mew's on my list, though. Uh, while his design isn't bad, it's not really anything spectacular, at least in my opinion. In spite of being able to learn every TM and HM, though, Mew is rather weak, as you could probably guess from its small size and stature. Uh, however, with the move Psychic, Mew is able to wreck ghost types, since in Generation 1, all ghost types had the poison typing, which made them weak to Psychic. Uh, in fact, just as a food for thought, some of the best moves you could teach Mew were Psychic, Earthquake, Thunderbolt, and Blizzard. Which, and that moves that, at least as far as Generation 1 goes, you were pretty much guaranteed to win. Uh, as long as someone else wasn't resistant to your moves, or they weren't very bulky, you'd usually get a victory out of the match. Uh, so it's because of these unique abilities that Mew is number 9 on my list. Coming in at the number 8 spot, we have Gyarados, the water flying type Pokemon from Generation 1 who is shaped like a serpentine dragon. The reason Gyarados is on my list is the fact that, well, he's a decent water flying type whose typing removes his weakness to grass, and that makes him only weak to electricity and rock type moves which is not that bad. Admittedly, I didn't start using a Gyarados uh, until I played you know, Pokemon Gold and Silver and Pokemon Stadium 2, but in spite of that though, he's been a popular choice of mine whenever I come back to revisit Pokemon Stadium uh, in my own time and even for the purpose of this top 10. Although I haven't used him except more recently for this top 10, uh, he's still very useful. Uh, he's also one of the few water types that can actually learn electrolyte moves, which helps him to deal with other water types easily. That being said, like I just said, he has a very diverse move set. Um, obviously, obviously being able to learn water type moves, as well as electric type, ice type, and even fire type moves. For me, me personally, my move set from Pokemon Stadium was Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Blizzard, and the all powerful hyper beam. Uh, that, all that man moves that you know has a decent variety and can usually handle himself in a battle. Uh, of course, as long as you don't run into any electro types or something like that, then Gyarados will usually stand a chance. If he does have a bad matchup though, then you could just uh, switch into another powerful water type to deal with your opponents. If you happen to run into any legendaries like Mew, you can just use an ice type move to freeze them and that should give you an easier chance. 
And for these reasons, Gyarados is number 8 on my list. Oh! Is it down and out? In the number 7 spot, we have Dragonite, who is my favorite Dragon-type Pokémon out of the three introduced in Generation 1. The main reason why I like Dragonite, and frankly what the reason why he's on my list, is because I've actually been a fan of dragons since I was a little kid. I played games like Spyro the Dragon, and I even read about dragons in several science fiction stories. So naturally when I saw Dragonite, it piqued my interest. Admittedly, I didn't use a Dragonite in Red and Blue. Usually when I play the game, I would just stick with whatever team I made up through the whole game and then just try to, you know, quote unquote, catch them all uh, after uh, finishing the main storyline. I did get to use him though, I found, you know, he has a very diverse moveset, especially for Pokemon Stadium standards. As many might know, the only Dragon type move in Generation 1 was Dragon Rage, which doesn't take any, uh, typing into account, so its only actual weakness was to Ice types making him a very powerful Pokemon. Of course, with his diverse moveset, like I mentioned earlier, he could learn various moves such as uh, Thunderbolt, Blizzard, Hyper Beam, and Fire Blast, which basically made him cover all of his weaknesses. The only real way to take down a Dragonite would either be to have a strong physical attacker or someone with Thunder Wave. If that's not present, then usually you won't have a problem winning with Dragonite. All these reasons are why Dragonite is number seven on my list. Is it down and out? Oh, Making the number six spot is Lapras, the water ice type Pokemon, also known as the transport Pokemon. Usually in Pokemon Red and Blue, uh, Lapras was actually the first Pokemon that I would teach Surf, because by the time the game gives you Lapras, it's usually one of the better water types to have at that point, and in my opinion, compared to the other ones, uh, which being Shelter and Seal, are one of the, the best uh, water ice type you have access to. And that being said, it's Lapras is the one I use more often. I only really use Shelter and Seal in the post games. If you've seen me online, you know I even use Lapras to this day due to how much variety it has. Being an ice type, it can actually combat its weakness to grass relatively well, and it can also learn Thunderbolt to deal with any other water types it comes up against. And it's also very bulky which means it can actually take super effective hits from grass types and life types pretty well, usually taking up to two or three before it gets knocked out. It can handle normal types like Kangaskhan, who have access to its weakness to rock with Rock Slide, and due to its bulkiness, because of that, it is still a very useful Pokemon. In fact, uh, Lapras has actually gotten me out some type spots, especially when I revisited uh, Pokemon Stadium for this top ten. Aside from Battle Strategy, uh, it also has a cool design, since it's based off the Loch Ness Monster from Norse Mythology. I don't Hollow Mythology in too many cases, but I can definitely see the resemblance. And like I said, it's, Lapras has been useful to me in both Generation 1 and even the more recent games. Being a part Ice-type, it completely wrecks the Dragonite, since Dragonite has a four times weakness to Ice-type moves as well. And since Blizzard has 90% accuracy it's in Generation 1 as opposed to 70 later on, it makes it much easier to take down your opponents. So these reasons are why Lapras is number 6 on my list. Oh! Is it down and out? Pokemon choice. There's only one Pokemon against three. Surfing Raichu is better than Raichu, in my opinion, because, well, obviously, it can learn Surf. The way you get Surf is to get a Pikachu from Generation 1 and bring it into Pokemon Stadium. But then, if you use Pikachu in every match of the Prime Cup Master Ball, and you clear it, you're able to teach Pikachu Surf. And this was honestly the only way you could get a Surfing Raichu in the game. One Pokemon against two now! The reason I chose Raichu for the number 5 spot is because it was the first electric type that I used to clear the main storyline for Red and Blue and subsequently beat the Pokemon League. While regular Raichu is fine admittedly, Surfing Raichu is much better just because Surf gives it much better coverage. It also gives it protection against its one weakness of ground types, which is needed because without Surf, a Raichu couldn't take an earthquake if its life depended on it, especially if its opponent is, is also a ground type Pokemon. There's just one Pokemon aside now! However, as good as a Pokemon as Raichu is, it has really low defenses. So even without an Earthquake from uh, being used against it, one or two powerful attacks are usually enough to take it out. And 
aside from learning Surf through Pokemon Stadium, it does not have the best type coverage at all. Aside from its electric type moves, the only moves you can learn aside from normal type moves would be Submission. Because this, at least in my opinion, the best setup for Raichu in Generation 1 was to have it no Surf, Thunderbolt, Submission, and either Mega Punch or Double Edge, depending on whether you want like recoil or not. So while Raichu and Surfing Raichu may not be the best Pokemon, they're good enough for me, and those reasons are why Surfing Raichu is number five on my list. Oh, is it down and out? Blastoise. In the number 4 spot, we have Blastoise, who is my favorite water-type Pokemon from Generation 1. It also happens to be one of the three stars on the Kanto region, if you didn't know that. The main reason I like him is because, well, he's a freaking water turtle. I mean, it's a turtle, it's a turtle cannon on his back, what's not to like? While it may not have been my initial reason for choosing him in the red and blue games, looking at it now, it definitely makes him cool in the design department. Aside from that, oh, he's pretty damn good competitively, both in Generation 1 games and even in the newer games. He is admittedly rather slow, but as a trade-off, he's very bulky, so he can defend himself against super effective hits. Although his biggest weakness is to electrotype moves, he can still survive most of the damage from those attacks. Even super effective moves like Razor Leaf will still hurt him, um, even though the opponent gets a critical hit. But his bulk allow him to take at least two super effective hits from either grass or, uh, or electric moves before he gets taken down. Despite being slow and bulky, though, he does have a pretty decent moveset at least. Uh, as you can see here in the footage, he can actually learn Earthquake, which will help him deal with electric types. And he can also learn Blizzard or Ice Beam to deal with grass types as well as learning submission for slightly extra coverage and of course hydro pump is a good stab move anyway those reasons are why blastoise is number four on my list oh is it down and out <laughs> go, go, go. oh it's articuno <laughs> hold it oh it's not the Oh, it's Articuno! Santa! Mosa! Objection! 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa! Just... Hold it! Keep in mind that this is my list and my rules, so... Take that! Now let me explain why all three legendary birds are tied to the number three spot before you all bite my head off. The reason they're tied for this spot is because while they each have individual attributes that I like, there isn't any specific component that makes me like mo one more than the other. Articuto, for example, has a very majestic design to it. It's an ice bird, which I think is a pretty cool concept. Uh, aside from that, though, it's not very powerful and has a lot of weaknesses, and its moveset's not very diverse. So, for me, the design is really the main, if not the only reason, that I like it. One interesting thing is while I was playing Pokemon Stadium for this uh, purpose of this top 10, I discovered that a good combination for it was to use Toxic, Substitute, Fly, and even Blizzard or Ice Beam, which would turn out to be a great Toxic Stalling set. It even works well against Vaporeon and Pokemon like that, who also happen to use Toxic Stalling sets. For, at least for me, I found this to be one of the best ways to run an Articuno since Generation 1 and even in newer games, Articuno does not have the most diverse moveset. Next up, we have Zapdos. The reason I like Zapdos is actually due to a combination of his design and of the variety of moves that he can learn. The fact that Zapdos is an electric bird is a pretty cool concept, although I do find his wings to be a little bit weird. I know they're supposed to be based off lightning and electricity, I get that, but I still find it weird nonetheless. Being an electric flying type, though, it gives it some great coverage, um, allows it to stand up to other electric types other flying types, and even other Zapdos. And as you can see in the footage, Zapdos is even good enough to KO a Sleeping Itu on its own. Lastly, we have Moltres. In a similar respect to Articuno, the reason I like Moltres is basically because of its design. Moltres is basically a phoenix, which I think that's honestly pretty cool. Also, Fire happens to be one of my favorite Pokemon types next to Dragon types, so that's another thing. And I find Fire to be cool, and honestly anything that breathes Fire, in my opinion, is pretty damn awesome. Lastly, which uh, my favorite color is red, and which Moltres has to some extent, so that's another thing. And these are really the main reasons I chose it. Like Articuno, though, the best way to use Moltres is to have it run a Toxic Stalling set with Toxic, Substitute, Fly, and, at least in this case, Fire Blast. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't have a very diverse moveset, and it has a lot of weaknesses, even slightly more than Articuno, which makes it much less powerful than it could be. Looking at the three legendary birds, I have to say that Zapdos is probably the best, competitively anyway, just because it has less weaknesses and has a much better moveset, and that moveset was even expanded on in later games, so it got better as time went by. Although, like any battle, it can change based on who their opponent is, but they do work well as a combination, like the three of them fight together. In fact, as you can see in the footage here, I'm using all three legendary birds to uh, KO this Blastoise, or try to KO this Blastoise. I guess if you haven't noticed yet, this is a consistent theme throughout this top ten. Uh, to have each Pokemon in the list uh, fight off the Pokemon that came before them, because, you know, why the heck not? So while each legendary bird isn't the best individually, they do work well as a team, and it's because of their individual characteristics and abilities that they are tied for the number three slot on my list. Oh! Is it down and out? Oh! Is it down and out? Oh! Is it down and out? Oh, it's Mewtwo! Mewtwo. In the number two spot, we have Mewtwo, the most powerful legendary Pokemon from Generation 1, the most powerful Psychic-type Pokemon from Generation 1, and arguably the most powerful Pokemon from Generation 1. The reason I chose Mewtwo is because he was actually been my favorite Generation 1 legendary Pokemon since I first played Red and Blue. I caught Mewtwo long before I caught Mew, and even though I got the Legendary Birds beforehand, I found Mewtwo to be much more useful just to the extreme variety of moves that it can learn. Although Mewtwo can't learn as many moves as Mew, admittedly, it is still very powerful and it is really hard to take down. Unless you focus on Mewtwo's defense, uh, which is rather low, a trait shared by most if not all Psychic types in the first generation, you will likely be taken out by its special stat, which is practically off the charts. Since it can learn very diverse moves, uh, some of the better ones were Psychic, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, and even Earthquake. And when we go to that, there are very few Pokemon that can stand against Mewtwo. And as you can see here, one of the best ways to take that Mewtwo is to use status ailments, especially Poison, because that will slowly wear him down. Uh, then, after that, you see they have to stall him out or keep hitting it with really powerful moves. Of course, if you don't manage to do that, then Mewtwo will easily KO your entire team. So when facing one, you have to hope that either you have your own powerful Mewtwo that can deal with it, or you have a team that can uh, inflict status ailments to Mewtwo while being really bulky as hell. So as you can see from this position in the list, Mewtwo is my favorite Generation 1 Legendary Pokemon, and a pretty damn powerful Pokemon in his own right. But as you can again tell by its position, it's only number two. So I'm sure the question that all of you are asking right now is, what could possibly be better than Mewtwo? What could possibly be number one? Well, you'll find out soon enough. It's finally taken down! I know you're all wondering what's number one, but before we get to that, let's do a quick recap. Now it's time for number one. Pokemon, I choose you! Oh, it's Triangle! <laughs> Whoa, calm down. Keep in mind that this is my opinion and my list. Yep, that's right. Number one for me is Charizard. He's my favorite Generation 1 Pokemon, and he's been my favorite Pokemon of all time since I first started playing Pokemon. My first Pokemon game was Red version, and since Red was my favorite color, I decided to check it out. I picked Charmander, who was Red at the time, although admittedly he becomes orange after Charmeleon evolves into Charizard. But like they say, you never forget your first Pokemon. Uh, he breathes fire and he's based on a dragon, even though the games don't consider him to be one officially. And as you heard me mention earlier in this list, I'm a fan of things that breathe fire and dragons. 
And since Charizard's essentially both, it's one of the main reasons why he's my favorite. In Generation 1, you know, he was actually pretty good, and since the only real counter to Charizard, uh, the only real powerful counter anyway, uh, Charizard was Rock Slide, which could easily be countered by Charizard's Earthquake. And admittedly, he became less powerful in later games due to more powerful moves that could affect him. He was still pretty damn good in Generation 1, and he also worked well for me in Pokemon Stadium. As you can see here, he is absolutely decimating the rival's team in the final battle of Gym Leader Castle. And, you know, while he may not be the strongest Pokemon out there, he's a fire breathing dragon, and that, along with his cool design, is the reason why he's my number one Generation 1 Pokemon and my favorite Pokemon of all time. And with that, I'm going to end this with a final battle against Mewtwo. Take it away. This is truly it! The final battle against Mewtwo! Hey there guys, if you liked what you saw, feel free to like the video and tell me what you thought. If you do comment though, be nice and respect my opinion. If you respect my opinion, I'll respect yours. Also, feel free to leave your own top 10 kind of Pokemon in the comment section below. I'm really interested to see what your lists are like. If you'd like to know when my new videos are coming out, you can click the subscribe button in the middle of the video screen to subscribe to my channel. YouTube will instantly update your my subscription section whenever I have, I've uploaded a new video. I'm also planning to do a Pokemon Stadium Round 1 and Round 2 playthrough to coincide with this top 10. If you click the picture at the top left corner of your screen, it will take you to my Pokemon Stadium Round 1 playthrough. Round 1 is essentially normal mode, so I'll, I'll only be using rental Pokemon, uh, which are the Pokemon that the game provides to players who don't actually own uh, Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow. Uh, if you click at the picture at the bottom left corner of your screen, it will take you to my Pokemon Stadium Round 2 playthrough. Round 2 is essentially hard mode, so I'll be using Pokemon that I've trained in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, respectively. Uh, if you'd like to watch my next Top 10 video when it uh, comes out, you can click the picture at the top right corner of your screen to be taken to the video for my Top 10 Johto Pokemon from Generation 2. If you'd like to check out the rest of my content here on YouTube, you can click the picture at the bottom right corner of your screen, which will take you directly to my channel. With that, I wish you all a good day and a good night. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.